Speaking Test Demonstration Component 5 Cambridge IGCSE English as a Second Language The aim of this demonstration is to support teachers and examiners in conducting the Cambridge IGCSE English as a Second Language Speaking Test. The speaking test is aimed at second language candidates and its main aim is to assess language used with the purpose of meaningful communication. The speaking test is not testing how much candidates know about a certain subject, and there are no right or wrong answers in this test. The test is designed to help candidates communicate clearly by responding to your questions. The key to running successful speaking tests in your centre is to be completely prepared. A few weeks before the test, you will be sent a copy of the teacher's and examiner's notes and two sets of speaking assessment cards. These documents must not be opened until one working day before the exam. These materials must remain confidential and must be kept in a secure place by the centre until the end of the examination period. Well in advance of the test, you must find a suitable room to conduct the speaking test, with two chairs and a table or desk in between. The room must be quiet and free from disturbances. Examination conditions must be in place at all times. Candidates must not communicate with each other or share the contents of the card. Download the speaking examination summary form and fill in the centre details and candidates' names and numbers. You should fill in the candidates' names and numbers in the same numerical order that they appear in the mark sheet MS1. This form can be found on the Cambridge Samples database. Before the tests begin, you need to check your stopwatch and recording equipment. The recording equipment must be of good quality and you must make sure that the candidates can be heard clearly throughout the whole test. One working day before the speaking test, you will need to open the speaking assessment cards and the teacher examiner's notes. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the topics and to think about the questions you might ask. Once the materials have been opened, they must be stored securely whenever they're not being used to prepare or conduct live speaking tests. You must not share this information with anyone and the speaking test materials must remain confidential until after the results inquiry period, on the day of the speaking test. Check your recording device. The candidate must be able to be heard clearly. Place the recording device closer to the candidate or, if possible, use two microphones, one for you and one for the candidate. Each CD should begin with a clear statement giving the centre number, centre name, examination syllabus details, examiner name and date. Check that your equipment is charged or has batteries and the CD or USB you're using has enough space. Check that your room is ready for the candidates. It should be a quiet room, away from noise and distractions. Reread the speaking assessment cards. In the exam room you should take a stopwatch, recording equipment with spare batteries or a charger, pens, pencils, a glass of water, teacher's examiner's notes, the speaking examination summary form, form MS1, speaking assessment cards and the speaking assessment criteria grid. You cannot bring dictionaries or mobile phones. Candidates' phones are not permitted in the test. During the speaking test, candidates must be examined on their own and the speaking test must be conducted in English all the way through. The whole speaking test should last about 10 to 15 minutes. Candidates must not bring any notes into the examination room, write any notes or consult any dictionaries. It is important that you begin recording as soon as the candidate enters the examination room and that once the recording of the test has begun, it must not be paused. Even though Part D is the only assessed part of the test, you must record the whole test, Parts A, B, C and D. The speaking test has four parts. Part A, Welcome and Introduction. Part B, Warm Up, which lasts two to three minutes. Part C, Preparation Period, which also lasts two to three minutes. And Part D, The Assessed Conversation, which lasts between six and nine minutes with a total time of between 10 and 15 minutes. All parts of the speaking test must be recorded, but only Part D is assessed. Part A. Welcome and introduction. Start the recording as soon as the candidate has sat down. Give the candidate's name and number and welcome the candidate and explain briefly what's going to happen in each part of the speaking test. 
The examiner script for this part is provided in the teacher's notes. And remember, part A is not assessed. Morning, Hu Jin. My name's Mrs King. I'm your examiner today. I'll start the recording and then explain the test to you. Centre number AB123, centre name International College, examination IGCSE 0510, English as a second language, examiner name Mrs S King, date 16th of April 2018, candidate number 1234, candidate name Hu Jin Park. Remember that you need to start recording as soon as the candidate enters the room. OK, Hu Jin. Um, first, we'll have a two to three minute general discussion about your interests and life outside school. This part isn't assessed. Then I'll give you an assessment card, which has the topic we will discuss in the last part of the test. You'll have two to three minutes to read the five prompts on the card to prepare for this part. You can't make any written notes, but you can ask me to explain anything you don't understand. Finally, we'll have a discussion based on the five prompts on the card and any ideas of your own on the topic. This part lasts six to nine minutes and is the only part that is assessed. You may keep the assessment card until the end of the test. Take this time to ensure the candidate is clear about the structure of the test and what will happen at each stage. Part B, warm up. Put the candidate at ease by conducting a short conversation, maybe two to three minutes, on general topics and the candidate's hobbies and interests. Give the candidate time to get used to the exam situation. Decide on a suitable speaking assessment card for the candidate. And remember, part B is not assessed, but still needs to be recorded. So, do you have any questions? No, I'm OK. OK, yeah. we'll start the test then. So, um, tell me, what, Hu Jim, what do you like doing in your free time? Mm, I usually lie in my bed to use my phone. <laughs> okay. And I live now. I live in my host family with my host family. All oh, right. Yeah, I usually talk with my host family and homemate. Yeah, yeah. One of them came from Thailand. One of them came from Switzerland. Yeah. Do you spend time with them at the weekends? Do you do anything with them? Uh, not this special, but we have to have a dinner and breakfast right. with, with them. Yeah. So you yeah. talk to them yeah, then? Yeah, talk to them and maybe for one hour, two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other interests or things you like doing in your free time other than lying in your bed? <laughs> and I watch film or video to use my Netflix. Right, yeah, so you use yeah, Netflix. Yeah, and nowadays I try to watch movie without subtitles. Yeah, maybe it is very good for my English skill. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. And do you like traveling at all? Yeah, 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 I like. And where have you been? Tell me some of the places you've been to. Uh, Last weekend, I went to York. Did you like York? I actually saw so. Yes, yeah, so so. Yeah, but quite good and very energetic city. Yeah, I felt. Yeah, yeah. And have you been to any foreign countries? Uh, I went to Hol Holland. Holland? Yeah, and Spain. And Spain? Yeah. Did yeah. you like Spain? Yeah, weather was so nice, better than UK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, better than UK. And, but food is so so. Yeah, it was very salty for Was me. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was in Barcelona, did you say you went to? Barcelona and Madrid. Madrid. Yeah, yeah. And was there a difference in the food? between the two places? No, I think similar. Seemed about yeah, the same. Yeah, it was similar, yeah, but it was very sorty. This section should help you see which card you're going to choose for the candidate. Part C, preparation period. 
Select one of the speaking assessment cards for the candidate. This must take place after the warm up. Give the candidate two to three minutes to prepare, and in this time, the candidate may ask questions. Any necessary explanations should be given at this point. Candidates must not make notes during this period. Candidates must keep their speaking assessment card for the rest of the test, and remember, the preparation period must be recorded. The speaking assessment card needs to remain with the candidate for the whole time. Each speaking assessment card has a topic for discussion between the examiner and the candidate, together with five prompts to help the conversation. Students are not allowed to use dictionaries or write anything down. I'm going to give you assessment card B, which is B journeys. So you have two to three minutes. To look at this, you can ask me any questions. If there's anything there you don't understand, but you can't make any written notes. Okay. 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 I'm ready to start. Try to encourage the candidate to use their full two to three minutes to prepare for the speaking test. You can answer any questions that the candidate might have, but do not give the candidates any ideas about what they could say. Oh um, no! Please take a little bit more time. You have two to three minutes. Ah, uh, okay. So just read through it again, and then I'll tell you when uh, we're going to start. Okay. Okay. Can I ask something? Yes, please do. Uh, what does make regularly mean? Regularly, if you make a journey regularly, it's something you do either every day yeah. or every week or perhaps two or three times a year. Yeah. It's not something you just do once. Oh, uh, okay, I see. Okay, Eugen, are you ready to start? Yeah, I'm ready. The candidate can ask you questions about the meanings of words and for further clarification, but they must not write anything down. Let the candidate keep the card for the rest of the test. You should not make any notes while the candidate is speaking. This is the speaking assessment criteria grid. Part D is assessed on structure out of ten, vocabulary out of ten. And development and fluency, also out of ten. You will need to give each candidate a mark out of ten for each of the criteria, and then add these together to give a mark out of thirty. You will find the speaking assessment criteria grid in the syllabus and teachers' examiner notes. Part D, assessed conversation. Use each of the five prompts on the speaking assessment card in the order that they appear on the card. Ask additional questions of your own based on the candidates' responses. Aim to spend an equal amount of time on each prompt. Don't let the candidate deliver a monologue. This should be a discussion. And remember, 
This is the only part of the test to be assessed. Right, so many people make regular journeys, either short or long. Can you tell me about a journey or journeys that you or people you know make regularly? The examiner can use the opening sentence to help start the conversation. Mm, I know one person who make regularly uh, for journey. Who's yeah, that? Uh, the person is my mother. Yeah, mm, my family Lily's reason is Buddhism, and my mother always always go to. Uh, temple, top, temple. Uh, on the top of the mountain, yeah, and we have one holiday for our Buddhism, and my mother have to go to temple, and maybe once a year. When's that? What time of the year is that? What time of the year? Maybe May? May. Yeah, May, May, yeah, maybe right. May, yeah, 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 I'm not sure actually, yeah. Continue to work your way through the five prompts until the time limit ends. All five prompts must be used, however, you can introduce open questions of your own related to the topic. Do not allow the candidate to deliver a monologue and make sure you ask a range of questions. Try not to pose the prompts as questions, they should be used to develop a conversation. Yeah, and... I've been there maybe three times uh, because of to pray for my Buddhism. Yes. Yeah, now I'm high school student. Now I'm wanting to go university. Okay. And I prayed for Buddhism. I wanted to this university like that. Yeah. And did you enjoy going to the temple? Do you like going to the temple? I like, but it was very hard journey because I have to climbing. Top of the oh, mountain. Oh, to the top of the mountain. Yeah, just on foot. Yeah. And yeah. how long did that take? To One go hour. To... Oh, quite yeah. a long journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From my home to there, it takes one hour to take a car. And I have to climbing the top of the mountain for one hour. Oh, so one is hour. two hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and what about... Um, the things that people do during long journeys mm. and why. Can you think of a long journey you've long been journey. on? Oh, yeah. Uh, when I came to here in Cambridge, I had to flight, use flight. It took uh, 12 hours from my country to UK. It's a long flight. Yeah, it was a very long journey, yeah. What did you do on the journey? In flight, uh, usually I sleep, <laughs> yeah, and I watch it, the video, uh, film, movie, and drama. How many did you watch? How many? Maybe two, two, two or three. Yeah, but I've never talk next to my seat person. <laughs> yeah, just concentrate my movie. And my food. And the food. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you enjoy the food on the plane? Well, nowadays, it is very nice, I think. I think it has improved a lot, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I used British Airways. I was going to ask, was it British Airways? Yeah, Korean? yeah, it was very nice, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it was British food? Yeah, British food. So yeah. your first taste of British food was on the plane? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was my, my first experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, when you're traveling, um, you say you don't speak to the person on the plane next to you. Yeah. Um, but if you're traveling with other people, mm. perhaps friends or family, what are the advantages and disadvantages? of traveling with other people? Mm, advantage is I can't be lonely. Uh, it is more fun than without, the, without other people. It is more fun. I yeah, think. I, I think it is more fun and it is more safe. Yeah. Why is, why is safe. it safer? 
This question allows the candidate to develop their answer. You should ask a range of questions throughout Part D that build on what the candidate has said and encourage a conversation. Uh, in night time, mm, maybe uh, if I go outside with other people and I can protect to myself more safer. Yeah. Yeah. With other people, it is safer, I think. Yeah. Um, but sometimes there are disadvantages of travelling with other people. Mm, yeah, yeah, I what think so. What do you so. think the disadvantages are? It is depend on um, my partner's personality and character. Yeah, uh, like I like this food, but my partner doesn't like this food. It is very big problem to our journey. So you think the difficulty can be in different opinions yeah, on what to eat? Yeah, different opinion, yeah. Perhaps where to go. Yeah, but we have to cooperate yeah, each other, yeah. But it is important to cooperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. And the, there's the suggestion that travel was more adventurous in the past. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree, yeah. How was it more adventurous? Because nowadays we can use our smartphone or tablet, but maybe 50 years ago people couldn't use anything. Just map a uh, campus to find their way. Uh, yeah, and uh, it wasn't safer, safe I think, it wasn't safe, yeah, more dangerous. Possibly more dangerous. Yeah. Then. Um, do you think you could find your way now with a map and a compass? Yeah, but it would be an adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe nowadays nobody use map and compass. <laughs> no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then there's the view that life is one long journey. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it started when I was born. Uh, yeah, life is a long journey because now I have to live <laughs> over 50 years and 60 years because nowadays many people live until 100 years old. There are a lot more people <laughs> yeah, live to 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are there many people in Korea live to 100 now? Yeah, especially in UK. In the UK Maybe there are many quite people. a lot. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to live to 100, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Like, yeah, why not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you think of any problems of living to 100? Maybe if I will be 60 years old or over 60 years old, I have to retire my company or my job and I don't have any job to get on my money. Yeah, may have a pension possibly. Yeah, and yeah, I have to keep my living. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps if you like your job, you'd yeah. be happy to keep working. Yeah, do you think? But, but I think I can't do, do my work over 60 years old. No, possibly not. Yeah, yeah possibly not, I think. It yeah. might be nice to enjoy retirement then. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Maybe there are many old people in country. I think it is a big problem. I think it could be. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Many, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that for Part D you have six to nine minutes. You should stay within this time limit, but allow the candidate time to develop their answers. You should use the full time to ask all of the questions on the speaking assessment card and to develop the conversation further with some additional questions of your own. Thank you, Hu Jin. That's the end of the test. End of recording. If I could just remind you that the assessment card is confidential, so please don't tell anybody about the card. OK, thank you. Thank you. Here are some key points to remember. There are no right or wrong answers to the questions. You should always appear interested in what the candidate is saying. You should ask open questions to develop conversation. You should give the candidates the full time allowed for each part. 
You must not allow candidates to deliver speeches or monologues. You must not indicate how well you think the candidate has done, either during or after the test. At the end of the candidate's test, remind the candidate about confidentiality. Candidates must not discuss the speaking assessment or the contents of their card with anyone else. Keep the speaking assessment card. The candidate must not take this out of the room. Complete the speaking examination summary form with the candidate name. Check the addition of your total marks. Check the battery in your recording device. Reset your stopwatch, and check you have sufficient space on the USB or CD for the next candidate. When all the speaking tests are complete, transfer the marks from the speaking examination summary form onto the mark sheet MS1. Select the samples to send to Cambridge Assessment and transfer them to a separate CD or USB. The sample should include a candidate with the highest mark and a candidate with the lowest mark. The remaining sample candidates should be spread evenly across the mark range. Further essential information about the sample can be found on the samples database. Centres must keep a copy of the recordings of all the tests until the end of the inquiry period. Label the tracks with the candidates' names and numbers. Asterisk the selected candidates on the speaking examination summary form. Send the sample CD or USB, completed MS1, or a printout of the marks submitted electronically, and speaking examination summary form to Cambridge Assessment as soon as the tests have been completed. The aim of this video is to support teacher examiners in conducting the Cambridge Foreign Language Speaking Tests. It covers the structure of the test, which includes different parts and timings of the test, what you will need with you in the examination room, and how to set up the rooms and the exam. Let's start by looking briefly at the structure of the speaking test. Preparation time. Each candidate is given 10 minutes to prepare for the test in a different room from the examination room. During this time. The candidate is given a card which describes a role play scenario that they will take part in during the test. The candidate is not allowed to make notes or use dictionaries during the preparation time and must be supervised in the room. The test. To start the test, there is a short 30 second warm up in the target language. You should greet the candidate using the prompts provided. This part is not assessed. After this short discussion, the role play can start. The role play should last for approximately two minutes and the candidate answers questions from the teacher examiner in a role play scenario. This part of the test is assessed. The next part of the test is topic conversation one. This is an assessed conversation, which lasts for four minutes. The candidate answers questions from topic area A or topic area B and will be asked to share opinions and experiences. The final part of the test is topic conversation two. This is also an assessed conversation, which lasts for four minutes. For topic conversation two, the candidate answers questions from topic area C, topic area D, or topic area E. Let's now look at what you as the teacher examiner should do before starting the speaking tests. You must read the guidance in the Cambridge Handbook about the conduct of non-coursework speaking tests. Read the instructions for teachers examiners booklet, including the mark schemes. Study the scripts for the role plays and topic conversations and download copies of the working mark sheet from the Cambridge Samples database at www.cambridgeinternational.org forward slash samples. You are also responsible for setting up the examination and preparation rooms correctly. You must find a suitable room for conducting the speaking test, with two chairs and a table or desk in between. The room must be quiet and free from disturbances. Examination conditions must be in place at all times. You must also find a quiet room for the candidate's preparation time. There should be no prompts, posters or display material in the target language on the walls in either room. Candidates must be supervised and must not be able to communicate with each other at any point during the preparation time, the test, or whilst entering or leaving the examination room. Before the test, you will need to think about what you need in the examination room. Here is a list of what you need. The Instructions for Teachers Examiners booklet, 
a stopwatch or timer. This should not be a timer on a mobile phone. Recording equipment with spare batteries or a charger. A black or blue pen for marking. The speaking assessment criteria grids. These are the mark schemes for the test. Copies of the working mark sheet. A list of the candidate names and numbers. And the candidate cards. Dictionaries and mobile phones are not allowed in the examination or preparation rooms. If you know what you have to do and have everything that you need, the candidates will have the best possible chance to demonstrate their abilities. Before the tests begin, you will need to check your stopwatch or timer and your recording equipment. The recording equipment must be of good quality and you need to make sure that your candidates can be heard clearly throughout the test. Place the recording device closer to the candidate or if possible, use two microphones, one for you and one for the candidate. Check your equipment is plugged in, charged or has batteries and that the device, CD or USB you are using has enough space for the recordings. Candidates must be examined on their own and the speaking test must be conducted entirely in the target language. The speaking test should last about 10 minutes and the candidates are not allowed to bring notes or write notes during the preparation time or the test. They are also not allowed to use dictionaries. During and after the test, candidates must not communicate with each other or share the contents of the test. It is important that once the recording of the test has begun, it is not paused. You must record the whole test. Here is a demonstration of the full speaking test, which shows the exact setup and structure of the test. The video was filmed in a studio and conducted in English. It is not a real test and does not aim to provide model candidate answers. It does not show how the candidate should answer the questions or achieve marks, and it does not focus on the marking and moderation of the test. Preparation time. This lasts 10 minutes. The candidate studies a role play scenario provided on a candidate card. They must be supervised under exam conditions. Remember that the candidate is not allowed to make notes. You must not share the topics of the topic conversations with the candidate during their preparation time or before their test. The start of the speaking test. At the start of each test, press record on the recording equipment. Do not stop or pause the recording equipment at any point during the test. Say your name, the candidate number, the candidate's name, the candidate card number and the date. Start the timer or stopwatch and make a note of the start time of the test. You should monitor the timing for each part of the test and you may want to restart the timer for each part. Remember that the role play lasts for approximately two minutes. Topic conversation one lasts four minutes and topic conversation two also lasts four minutes. After starting the timer or stopwatch, greet the candidate using the prompts provided. This section is recorded but not assessed. Examiner name, Mrs. Caroline Davidson. Candidate number 0031. Candidate name, Alice James. Candidate card number six. The date today is March the 30th, 2021. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. We're going to start the test. Are you ready? Yes. The examiner keeps this short. Remember though, the greeting is not assessed and can last approximately 30 seconds. Role play. Set the scene for the role play by reading out the role play scenario exactly as it is printed in the instructions for teacher's examiner's booklet. Ask all of the role play questions exactly as they are printed. If there are two parts to the question, you should pause and wait for the candidate to answer the first part before asking the second part. You can repeat any role play question if the candidate has not understood or did not hear, but you must not rephrase any of the role play questions. If the candidate still cannot answer one of the questions after you've repeated it, move on to the next question. Listen to and assess the candidate's answers using the role play mark scheme and write down the marks on the working mark sheet. There are two marks available for each response. You're visiting a friend. You want to go to the park. I'm your friend. What time do you want to go to the park today? 
Um, we could go at half past ten. That's fine. How shall we get there? We could take the bus. Good idea. It's going to be very hot today. What shall we take? I think we should take some sun cream so we don't get burnt and a sun hat. Mm, I agree. What have you already done here? Um, last weekend I visited London and I walked around these streets and did some shopping. And what have you enjoyed the most? Um, I enjoyed walking around the different gardens and the parks the most because it was lovely to see all the different wildlife and it was a really nice day. Sounds great. What would you like to do tomorrow? Um, tomorrow I would like to stay inside and I would like to read a book and watch a film. Why? Um, because there's a new film in the cinema and I'd like to go and see it with my friends because I think I'll really enjoy it. That's the end of the role play. Remember here to note down the marks for the role play on the working mark sheet. Topic conversations one and two. Go to the correct topic conversation, which is listed in the Instructions for Teachers Examiners booklet. In the target language, say to the candidate, first, we are going to talk about giving the name of the first topic. You must ask each question exactly as it is printed, and you must ask all five questions in the order that they appear in the teacher examiner script provided. If there are two parts to the question, you should pause and wait for the candidate to answer the first part before asking the second part. Listen carefully to the candidate's answer to each question. If the candidate does not answer a question, or answers very briefly and you think they could give a fuller response, you can ask extension questions in the target language, starting with question stems such as, tell me more about, what else can you tell me about, or is there anything else you want to say about? For questions one and two, if the candidate does not answer the first time, repeat the question. If the candidate still does not answer, ask the next question. Refer to this grid in the Instructions for Teachers Examiners booklet. For questions three, four and five, if the candidate does not answer the first time, repeat the question. If the candidate still does not answer, ask the alternative question or questions provided. If the candidate still does not answer, then ask the next question. If the topic conversation lasts three and a half minutes or less, even after asking extension questions, you must ask up to two further questions of your choice on the same topic as the other questions to make sure that the conversation lasts four minutes. Once the candidate has completed topic conversation one, say to the candidate in the target language, now we are going to talk about giving the name of the second topic. The instructions, timing and rules on asking and repeating questions for topic conversation two are the same as for topic conversation one. Now we'll start the two topic conversations. First we will talk about family, self, family and friends. Describe your family. Um, I live with my mum and my dad. I also have a brother who is 19 years old, so he's older than me, and his name is Tim. And we also have a dog called Maya. What do you normally do with your family in the evenings? In the evening, we usually sit together uh, in, on the sofa and watch a film or we play games. But sometimes when I have a lot of homework to do, um, for example, yesterday evening, I didn't spend time with my family because I had homework to do for school instead. <laughs> Tell me about an enjoyable weekend that you spent with your family or friends. Um, last weekend, um, my family and I drove to the beach and we took the dog for a walk along the beach. We also swam in the sea and played some tennis and it was a lot of fun. The examiner decides here to ask an extension question to allow the candidate to give a fuller response. 
Tell me more about that. Um, it was a lovely sunny day, so we were able to stay outside for a long time and we had some ice cream, which was really, really nice. <laughs> Do you think it's important to have good friends in life? Um, yes, I think it is important. Why? Um, I think you need to have friends you can spend time with and do things with them that in, instead of being with your family but you have some other people to spend time with and go out places and enjoy mm. different things. How are you going to stay in touch with your school friends later in life? Um, mm. How are you going to stay in touch with your school friends later in life? Uh, hmm. After repeating the question once already, the candidate is still having difficulty answering. The examiner now uses the alternative question provided. What are you going to do in the future to stay in touch with your school friends? Um, in the future, I will. when I go to university, I will stay in contact my, with my friends by texting them and I will go and visit them so we can catch up and talk and we'll have a coffee together. The topic conversation is currently shorter than three and a half minutes, so the examiner asks two extra questions on the same topic. And what would you like to do with your friends during the holidays? Um, in the holidays, I would like to visit a different country. This year I'd like to visit Spain with them because it's a lovely sunny country in the summer and we can visit different cities and do some mm. sightseeing and it, I think it will be really fun. What are the qualities of a good friend, Alice? Um, I think a good friend has to be trust you have to be able to trust them mm -hmm. um, and also want to they for them to support you and for you to be able to help them and have that relationship to help one another out and also enjoy your time together and have fun together now we're going to talk about communication and technology what kinds of electronic devices do you use? Um, at home, I have a computer. I also have a laptop that I take to school with me. And like a lot of people, I also have a mobile phone. How many hours a day do you spend online? Um, I think I spend around three hours online a day, yes. Tell me about the last time you used the internet for your schoolwork. The last time I used the internet for my schoolwork was yesterday. I had to do some research for my geography homework and I was using different websites to look up different pieces of information. Tell me more about that. Um, well, the internet can be very useful. Um, there are lots of different places to and websites to find different pieces of information, different facts that you can use in your work that you don't have. Mm. In your opinion, what kinds of electronic devices will there be in 20 years' time? Um... Do you think you could repeat the question, please? In your opinion, what kinds of electronic devices will there be in 20 years' time? Um, I think in 20 years' time, there will be even bigger computers that can do a lot more things than they can now. And I think there will be devices that are 
more portable LAN phones mm. that you can use all the time to easily find out information and to stay in contact with people. Mm. What are the advantages of social networks? Um, there are quite a lot of advantages of social networks. You can easily stay in contact with your friends and see what they're doing by them posting videos or photos and you can post videos or photos to show people what you're getting up to and also it's easy, an easy way to keep up with the news and the current events by looking at what people are talking about. And what are the disadvantages? Um, unfortunately there are some disadvantages. Um, for example, people, there can be things like cyberbullying on social networks where people have posted things that are horrible or mean and they often do it without thinking and don't realise the effect and the harm on other people. Mm. The examiner again realises that the second topic conversation is shorter than three and a half minutes. She asks the candidate one extra question on this topic. If you had a lot of money, Alice, what kind of electronic device would you like to buy? <laughs> um, that's a good question. <laughs> I think I would buy a really big television so I can watch films at home just like it is in the cinema. And I think I'd really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Alice. Thank you. That's the end of the test. Please, could you give me your candidate card? Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. When both topic conversations have been completed, award a mark out of 15 for communication for topic conversations 1 and 2 together, and a mark out of 15 for quality of language for topic conversations 1 and 2 together. Use the mark schemes provided and record the marks on the working mark sheet. At the end of each speaking test, you will need to take the candidate card from the candidate. They must not take the card with them when they leave the examination room. Remember, when the candidate leaves the examination room, they must not communicate with any other candidates. Make sure that you have completed all parts of the working mark sheet for the candidate and do not share the marks with the candidate. Check that the test has been recorded and can be heard clearly. If there is a problem with the recording, follow the instructions in the Cambridge Handbook about failed recordings. For any further information on conducting speaking tests, contact customer services at info at cambridgeinternational.org.